They tell, does anybody have Kelly's number? Someone called Kelly. Tell Kelly that I would like for there to be a part <laughs> that we would like for there to be a part two. Yeah, I don't know why. Hi guys, what's up? It's Summer. Welcome or perhaps welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. I know. I'm so sorry guys. It's been really, really busy with school and I'm in an internship this semester. Sorry if I sound weird. I'm hopefully getting over being sick, but I wanted to share with you guys my recent reads. Also, thank you guys so, so much for the recent subscribers. It means the world to me. And if you guys are clicking on this video and you have not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started with my recent reads. All right, so we're going to be starting with Zara Huzan is here, and I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, this book is about Zara, and her and her family moved to America from Pakistan. Um, I believe she was probably about like four years old when they moved, um, and she's she's such a sweet girl, um, and so basically her dad was on a work visa or he they moved for like work purposes i believe and um so her parents are very very like open-minded i think she like describes her family as being kind of like more like liberal muslims zara is queer and i love how much her parents um support her because religious or not religious um, sometimes like parents don't support their children um, in their relationships or especially if they're queer um, so I love how much her parents support her I love how they stand up for her um, there are some situations that Zara also goes through um, in being queer that her parents are like no this is you're not gonna say this to my daughter and I love things like that as well um, so it just really really sucks because because of the immigration process and how long it does take for immigrants to actually be able to get their papers and because they have been waiting for years even with her father working for years for um them to officially like get their green card they have to have like a clean record and all of this other stuff but they've been here for so long because of her dad's like working he was allowed to bring them here zara starts getting harassed by this white guy at her school named tyler and tyler basically flips her world upside down and zara just does not want to take it and she tries to keep her parents out of it as much as possible because again she doesn't want anything to fall into them she doesn't want them to get involved because she doesn't want to affect the process um of them being able to get their papers because they have been waiting so long i think they already have a lawyer like trying to help them with that but still because the process takes forever um and it's just it's so sad how you have to see like her her innocence and all of this kind of be i don't want to say like ripped away from her but how this the decisions that she has to make in order to stand up for herself and in order to kind of just like even stand up for her family the decisions that her family has to make in order to kind of like take a stand is so sad her community like does support her but it's just a lot and it just like really shows like the struggles that like brown children do have to go through and how quickly that can be just like turned upside down just from racial actions from white counterparts um but i thought it was a really good story i thought that zara felt like a real person um and i if i'm remembering this correctly i feel like she did have a little bit of issues with some of her friends um, where she did have to talk to them about some things because they weren't really like understanding her perspective it was either that or um the potential love interest in this book i forgot which one it was but i did think this was a good story i think i gave it like a 3.5 or a 4 on goodreads next i read the last story of mina lee and i tapped this a little bit if you guys can see the story is about margot lee and she finds her mother dead but she refuses to believe that it's not by coincidence like she's like no something had to happen something had to go wrong so her mother always lived a life with secrets um it's really really sad because her mother um, lost her parents um as a child and she never got to see them again i believe it really talks a lot about their mother and daughter dynamic um and margot learned so much about her mother that she never knew before um because her mother is an immigrant and um i believe her mother's from korea and it's it's real it's really just a lot like a lot of the stuff that her mother had to like go through and her mother had to like endure 
like it really is just like so sad and like margot having to find out the things that she finds out i also enjoyed the conversations of just kind of like what the face of america like actually is and how margot ended up morphing into this form of an identity that may not even have how margot ended up morphing into this person at first that wasn't even necessarily like who she was to an extent like there's some parts where like margot talks about she doesn't even feel like um or she she really didn't want like a part of her korean culture um she, she didn't really want a part of that because she kind of wanted to fit in as a little girl and like when her mom would try to tell her other things I, if i'm remembering this correctly i did read this a while ago but if i'm remembering this correctly like when her mom would try to tell her certain things like she just kind of wanted to fit in like it was already kind of like bad enough that like the actual face of america and, and what beauty is described as is like the white beauty and i don't know like i think that was like very interesting conversations the next story i read is happy ever afters which the new book one true loves is out so i'm super super excited about reading that soon so this story follows tessa and tessa is a writer but she only likes to share her stories with her best friend caroline i believe is her name and she's like very like secretive about her writing and she doesn't like to she doesn't feel comfortable enough to like share it with a lot of people um, her mother sends in her writing to this academy that Tessa actually really, really wants to go to and Tessa gets in, but she does it without Tessa knowing. So Tessa and her family like move for her to be able to, I think, yeah, they move for her to be able to go. And so she moves away from her best friend Caroline, but they still kind of keep in contact to an extent. Um, so with them doing that, Tessa gets to meet like new people and tessa has like such a diverse group of friends like i love like a lot of the characters that we get to meet through tessa um there's this one specific girl i cannot think of her name but i really love her she also lives in a neighborhood that is not very diverse so there's always kind of like eyes on her she's also natural so she has like the whole fro thing going on and i love that for her um we love to see the representation um, she's also biracial, so there's also the stairs of that. She has a brother whom is special needs, and I love that representation, and I love just, like, how he is treated like a normal person to an extent, like, the conversations, like, about him, like, I just love that. Even the conversations where she's talking about, like, I'm watching these natural gurus, so that way I can know how to, like, gel my hair down. I'm just like, girl, that is just so realistic, because especially, like, when you first go natural or, like, girls that know about what I'm talking about like if you are natural you you really don't know what to do with your hair especially like if your parents like don't know how to do your hair or anything like you're really just like what do I do so I thought that part was like really realistic um Tessa has anxiety I thought that was very realistic of her her like coming of age like I thought was pretty realistic I know there are some like cons where people are like she's literally like self-sabotaging but she's a she she's literally coming of age you know what i mean like she's coming of age i do believe that tessa is a morally great character there is like kind of like a love triangle going on there and i love sam i stand for sam sam is his hawaiian listen the hawaiian shirt and everything i stand for sam i stand for sam as a man i stand for sam as a listen i just love sam and if you guys have read and you know what i'm talking about if you know you know if you know you know and if you don't know i highly encourage you to read so that you know because I love it i love it i love seeing a nice man like i love seeing like a nice like boy becoming a man or whatever um be able to be like nice to women and also be able to like stand up for himself like yes like i'm a nice person i don't have to be like hood or hard or anything like that for you to like not run over me like but but you're gonna respect me to an extent like you don't have to be mean and like bullying people and everything like that but like you're not gonna like walk all over me and i love that the next book i read is where the rhythm takes you this book is about reyna and she's from tobedo her mother recently passed away or not recently but her mother passed away and so she focuses on running this resort because her father kind of like doesn't want anything to do with it so she really like kind of like does it like she does do a lot and she takes care of a lot and she had to kind of grow up like at a younger age because she is still like a teenager like herself and she's still kind of coming of she is coming of age herself so it kind of like focuses on like the romance between her and her ex-lover uh aiden and aiden used to live there but he left to become like a popular now he's like this pop star in america and him and his friends him and his like bandmates come back um to visit like the resort and to like i think it was like for more of a vacation like i don't think they were like touring or anything if i can remember correctly and they come back with like these two girls who they do something they're like models or something like that 
and so of course that creates some type of like issue between her and Aiden and then they start to be like oh okay well like you know bringing up their past the story has like a lot of like flashbacks it was very very like slow like burning flashbacks though I don't want to say slow burning flashbacks but just them being able to like talk about things was like extremely slow burning for me and very irritating to an extent but the characters could have had way more development than they did and again just the slow burn just like killed me with the slow burn just like killed me with this story the next book I read was Arsenic and Adobo. Okay, so this book follows, I think it's Leela, Lena. This book, first off, it has a glossary like in the very beginning. Um, for anyone that wants to know, um, Mia put a glossary in the very beginning. And the descriptions of food are like so amazing. And I know that's like, that's, like a really, really huge part of, of like Filipino like culture. And I love, love, love that. I was telling one of my friends about that. And he was like, yes, like it made him kind of like, <laughs> he doesn't even read. It made him kind of like want to read the story since I was telling him like all the good food descriptions. But so basically like the character, her boyfriend dies like in front of her. Um, and <laughs> her families are, her family is like hilarious. But her boyfriend dies in front of her and he's like a food critic and like he has like a lot of issues kind of sort of with like all of these like restaurants because he's kind of like a food critic I believe is what you call him and he goes into like her family's her family's restaurant and like he like dies and like listen y'all for this to be like a murder mystery I just feel like they are so much a lot about the fact that this man just died and I'm it's kind of like humorous but it's not at the same time because it's kind of like yo like man's really just died and we're just out here just chilling but okay but i really enjoyed like the food descriptions um i thought this story was like a good time i did kind of think it was strange that they were kind of like mentioning a lot of like her love interest being in and out of the story like that was kind of like intertwined in there and i did kind of think that was a little bit off but i did have a good time reading this story i love her family and i really do kind of feel like it gave the kind of cozy mystery-ish thing that it was trying to like give and again I did have a good time with it so the next book I read was she drives me crazy and I love 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 this book I know a lot of people had like a lot of things like a lot of cons to say about it especially when it comes to Irene um but I really really enjoyed this book and I'm like knocking on Kelly's door to make another one I'm knocking on Ke Kelly please Kelly please so basically Scotty had a bad breakup and so she messes up and playing the first basketball game and then I think like a lot of people aren't coming to the basketball games because they think the basketball team sucks or something like that so when she overhears Irene saying that she's like hey like I saved up money so if you get your cheerleading team to like come to more of the games so like more people start coming to the games like get people to come more to the games um I'll give you the money so Irene's also popular so she's like and just like go out with me to this like party um because like I'm gonna see like my ex-girlfriend there and I just I kind of just don't want it to seem like I'm still into her or whatever so she's like okay deal and I love it I literally love it I thought it was so cute I thought it was so adorable and it just like how everything just kind of like fell in place I loved it but no I really do think uh, please like somebody tell does anybody have Kelly's number someone called Kelly tell Kelly that I would like for there to be a part <laughs> that we would like for there to be a part two and we could just talk more about Irene because I would like to hear more about Irene's story all right, so that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it, um, subscribe, and do not forget to comment down below. I did the wrong motion. Subscribe, comment down below, and tell me if you guys have read anything, if you have any reading suggestions for me. Um, follow me on my Goodreads. Follow me on my Bookstagram. Um, I try to update my book reads, but I mean, good. <laughs> I try to update my Goodreads, but I don't update my Goodreads as much as I should. And I have been on bookstagram a lot more actually because when I first made it I wasn't really like posting that much and I've, I've tried to be more consistent so do make sure to follow me so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys in my next video bye guys